Well, quite often people with kidney stones don't have any signs or symptoms until the stone drops into the ureter and is blocking the flow of urine from that kidney. And that's what causes all that pain that you hear people talk about, the excruciating pain, it's worse than labor pain, and things like that. Other symptoms they can have is some blood on and off in the urine. Um, and if the stone is down low, about to pass into the bladder, they oftentimes complain about having to go to the bathroom frequently, feeling like they're not emptying their bladder completely. Dehydration, basically, lack of water. Um, so the single best thing to help prevent kidney stones is water, water, water. Um, you wanna keep the urine nice and dilute and clear so that these minerals don't have a chance to calcify, or excuse me, uh, form a, a calcification or, or a rock. And so oftentimes in the summer, we're active, we're perspiring a lot, and if we're drinking the same amount as we do in the winter, we're still losing a lot more fluid so the urine gets more and more concentrated and that's why stones uh, increase uh, in frequency during the, towards the end of the summer. Without any type of dietary change or modification or we like to say lifestyle change, more than about, it's roughly about a 50% chance they'll have another episode uh, within the next five to seven years. You always want your urine to look clear, and that's a good way to know that you're drinking enough water. Those are the, the, that's the single best thing you can do. Other things are a low salt diet, and um, I like to say about 99% of us in this country are on a high salt diet, even though we don't realize it, because salt is everywhere. And then the other thing is, is a normal amount of calcium in your diet. The best option is if you can pass it on your own. Um, and fortunately most people can pass stones on their own, but the larger the stone and the longer the stone has been present or causing symptoms, the less likely it is that you'll pass it on your own. So if we decide surgical intervention is going to be needed, uh, there's several options, but the two big options, um, one is the shock wave lithotripsy, which is where we kind of administer a sound wave type energy through the body that then works to break up the stone and then hopefully you pass a bunch of small fragments without too much difficulty. And the other option is to go up uh, from below, so there's no cutting or anything like that, but you're asleep for, this, for both procedures. But, and that's called your reteroscopy or the laser lithotripsy. And with that technology, we go in through the natural opening, basically, through the urethra, uh, into the bladder, and then up into the ureter with a t small telescope. And then we use a laser uh, through that telescope to break up the stone into many small little pieces or dust it, we like to say. And then hopefully you don't have too much problems passing those, uh, that dust. Since we are a large body of urologists, um, we all kind of have a subspecialty in what we do in the operating room. Um, so for instance, for kidney stones, Oh, about maybe half of us do kidney stones and the other half don't. Um, and then for other things like some of the female operations and things like that, some of the slings, only like two or three of the urologists do it. And by doing that, we're concentrating the skill in just a few hands. So rather than all of us doing maybe 10 cases a year of something, we've got a lot of doctors who are maybe doing 10 to 20 cases a month of a particular surgery. And that expertise is, is just invaluable as far as efficiency and, and good outcomes.